Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. I thought I'd have a bit of a chat to you today about, um, well, what a good real estate agent should be doing, and and um, you know, and obviously, if you're thinking about selling your house yourself, what you should be thinking about doing too. Um, what you should be asking yourself is, you know, who is going to buy buy this house that I'm putting on the market? And so, what they 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 refer to that as trying to work out your target market. And the reason why that's important is because. If you're trying to work out who your target market is, then once you know who your target market is, you can gear your marketing ten campaign towards that target market. At the end of the day, you don't want, um, you know, if it's a, a million dollar house in, I don't know, a prestigious suburb, then you don't necessarily want to target that towards first home buyers. It doesn't necessarily mean a first home buyer won't buy it, but you know straight away, it's, you know, less chance of a first home buyer. Hey, Michael, thanks for joining. Less chance of a first home buyer buying it than, than somebody else. So again, so you wouldn't target it towards, because you've got a limited budget when you're marketing a property and you've got limited funds, so what you really need to do is you really need to make sure every cent, every cent you spend is gonna give you a return on your investment, I suppose. So basically, every cent you spend has to sell, make you sell the house for more money. And if it's not, then you shouldn't be spending the money on those sort of things. So. So that might be a question for you if you are, you know, chatting to agents in the moment, you're not really sure which ones you should be talking to and which ones know what they're talking about, which ones don't, then probably start with that first question, you know, who is who is the target market? And to be honest, they should be bringing that up. You shouldn't have to ask that question. So if they're not bringing that up and saying, "Hey, this is the person that I think is going to or the the people that I think is going to buy this house," you know, it might be a a young couple or a young couple with two kids or it might be an older couple or it might be a particular social demographic so someone that's just starting out with you know very little funds or someone that's got heaps of cash and you know have set themselves up and so if they don't know the answer to that before they've been talking to you because at the end of the day they should be able to you know from their experience they should have a good idea of you know who's likely to buy certain houses and they should also have experience of you know when I'm selling that type of houses what do I have to do to make it appeal to that target market so that's the first thing. So identify your target market. You can't understand your target market until you identify it. And make that as really specific as possible. So, you know, age group, you know, 35 to 45, and it's got, you know, married with two kids and, you know, got a dog and they've got, um, you know, both working full time. Their kids go to local school. Their kids are going to be eight and 12. Or, you know, try and make it as specific as possible because then it just makes it so much easier when you're marketing the property because everything you do from then on can gear it toward that type of person. So when you, um, I've talked about in the past about trying to present your house as well as possible. So if we're going to hire some furniture and you know, have really nice photos and nice video, we're gearing it towards that section of the market. So you know the music we're going to have over our video is going to be suited to that type of market. The 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 furniture we have in the house is going to be suited to that type of market. The way we communicate, you know, on our on our flyers and marketing is going to be suited to that toward uh, toward that type of market. So every single thing you do is geared towards that specific targeted market until you have a reason to believe otherwise. So. So that's the first thing, know your targeted market and you really need to understand them. So the thing is, it may change. So you may have an expectation, just like the price, you don't have an expectation of what you think it's gonna sell for, but you never really know. At the end of the day, you're not buying it. So you know it's not up to you what the price is worth and it's not up to the owner what the price is worth. Um, it's up to what people are willing to pay. So likewise, who's gonna buy it? You don't really know until you put it on the market and start getting people to come and have a look at it. But what I'd be using is a bit of a shortcut to try and work out, okay, who's gonna buy this property? I'd use the owner as a bit of a guide. You know, if the going if the owner's only been there for a few years, and they, or even if they've been there for for quite a while, you know, who were they when they first bought the property? You know, were they a young family, or were they an older couple, or were they, you know, use that as your bit of a guide. And yeah, there might be exceptions. You might say, well, you know, they've got a big massive house here, and they're an old couple that you know, that it doesn't suit them anymore. But look back to when they first built the house or bought the house, you know, twenty years ago, and and what was their situation like then? And then gear your marketing towards what that owner. You know, it was like when they first moved into the house or when they built the house and why they designed it in a certain way because that's going to give you a good hint on who's going to be buying the property, I suppose. So once you've sort of, you can use the, the owner as a bit of a guide and, you know, you could use a bit of common sense, but at the end of the day, you know, common sense is a guess at the end of the day. So the other thing, I'd, you're really not going to know until you put it on the market. So once you put it on the market, you've really got to put a lot of effort into making sure you're getting huge amounts of feedback. So, you know, it's amazing when I go to opens that agents... You know, you're lucky if they get your name, if you know, and your phone number. Sometimes they don't even get that, and again, they don't even call you back because they go, "Oh, he's not interested. I don't want to talk to him." But the whole reason you're having open inspections is to get feedback. You're trying to give feedback to the owner, not necessarily just about the house, but also feedback about who's going to buy the house. You know, because that, if we know we're way off track as far as our target market, we think it's going to sell to a to a young couple with one kid, and then we suddenly get, you know, we've had 15 groups come through, and they're all older couples in their 70s, then we're we're targeting the wrong market. 
You know, so we might stick with that, you know, for the second open and the third open, but eventually if we know that we're getting the wrong target coming coming to our open, then we know we have to adjust the way we're marketing the property. And it might be, you know, you never know. You go out there and knock on the doors of the local bowls office, uh, bowls clubs or the, you know, the local tennis clubs or somewhere that we can try and find people that are suited to that target. And and likewise, if we know it's younger couples, we might knock on doors of, you know, the kin kindergarten or somewhere like that. So what you're trying to do is, you know, focus on the people that are going to buy the house. Don't talk to people that aren't going to buy the house. Don't spend all your money on people that aren't going to buy the house. What's you know, You've got very limited funds, so you've got to spend the money very, very wisely. So, And so that's why generally I have two people in open. I have one person at the front um, yeah, welcoming the people, giving them a little bit of a handout, giving them some information when they come in. And then I'm in there, I'm in there trying to sell the house, but I'm not even only trying to do that. I'm trying to get feedback, not just about the house, but also feedback about the owners. I want to know the purchasers. I want to know... You know, what's their situation? Why are they looking at buying? Why are they looking at buying this area? Why are they, you know, what's their family situation? You know, so, because then we can go back to the owners and have a really good plan of attack. Okay, well, this is the type of person that's going to buy the property. You know, I think we've done the right thing. This is the target we were aiming for. Yeah, we're right on track. So we just stick with it and we know, you know, if at least we're targeting, that's one less thing you have to worry about. So we tick that box off and then it might be the price or it might be some other way, you know, it's an issue. But at least you know it's not the target market's the problem. So, You've got to get heaps and heaps of feedback. So, and then again, once you've had the open, you follow them all up. Give them all a call. I know, you know, some agents only call the people that are interested. You know, you're calling all the people because, you know, they only tell you certain things at the open. Again, if you get heaps of people that you open to, you have a very limited chance to have a chat to everyone, like a good chat. So, quite often, I follow up after the open, and I'm talking. Yeah, you know, I might talk to people for half an hour or more, or an hour or so, just trying to really understand the situation. And they might not be interested in buying the property. You know, but I want to understand what their situation is and and why they came to look at it in the first place. Because if I understand why they came to look at it, then I can I can understand why other people might come to look at it. And if it didn't suit, I can know, well, okay, what was it about them that meant it didn't suit? And I know that I have to tweak my target market slightly to to um, make it suit someone that's going to be more suited for, basically. So, so yeah, hopefully you understand. You really got to get in as much detail as you can. Just answer hundreds and hundreds, of, ask hundreds and hundreds of questions, trying to find out as much about the people that come as possible. And that's why when I have opened, I invite everyone along, the neighbors, the friends, the workmates, everyone I possibly can, because that's the market, you know, and you're not going to know who's the target market going to be. Sometimes you can take a guess until we get lots of people there and suddenly someone you didn't think was going to be a target market points out a few things and you think, man, that's, you know, that that does suit that person. You know, maybe, maybe I should be focusing on those type of people. So... Hopefully that's made sense to you. And if you've liked what I had to say, then click on the like button. If you haven't liked it, then still click on the like button because I really appreciate it. And um, if you know someone's thinking about putting their property on the market or they're just weighing up which agent they should choose, then click on the share button because um, it would really help them when they're deciding on an agent that they can sort of you know, tick off the boxes. Does the agent know about this? And does the agent know about that? And does the agent know about this? And you know, if the agent's not talking about target markets and the agent's not talking about how, you know, the understanding of the target market and how we market to a particular target market, then... I don't know, I suppose you might want to just double check whether that's the agent for you, I suppose. So hopefully that's made sense, everybody. If you have um, some comments, I'd really appreciate it. Put some comments in the comment box. If you have something else you'd like me to talk about in the future, put a comment in the comment box below. Um, I've also, you know, last Sunday I did a, um, a market update report and I've had someone come through. They want me to give an analysis on a particular suburb in Adelaide, Arendale. So tomorrow night, and you're going to find out a bit more about Arendale. I'll tell you all about the proper, uh, the suburb. Um, area in general, but also in specific as far as the numbers go, what it's been doing over the last 12 months or five years or 10 years or 20 years. So if you're interested in something like that, then yeah, feel free to come along tomorrow night and check it out. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you can see the replay. Thanks, guys. And again, if you've got any questions, put the comments in the comment box and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Dan.